Hi everyone, uh, this is the last video that I'm going to post in 2016. Um, this is a year overview because I started with my weeklies in the beginning of 2016 and in the beginning there were a few hundred views, today there are always a few thousand views so I'm really happy to see how many people picked up these videos and helped me in sharing the news about the changes in the world so thank you for that. In this video I just wanted to give you the highlights of 2016. Uh, probably 2016 was a bad year for mankind if you look at what happened in the world. But I think if you look at what happened in terms of technology and the flipping point that we're having right now and, and the world shifting from a mobile first to an AI first world, I think it was a spectacular year. And I just want to give you my highlights of the year in this short video. And I really want to thank you for supporting my, my videos week after week. Happy holidays and enjoy the last show. DeepMind strikes again. This week, for the first time in human history, DeepMind, the deep learning engine from Google, has won in the uh, very complex board game Go from the best human in the world. And experts thought that this would take at least 10 more years before DeepMind would be smart enough to win in this game from a human. Well, it was this week that it happened. The news of the week it happened on Monday when LinkedIn was bought by Microsoft for $26 billion. It's a huge deal. It's probably one of the biggest deals in history. So I'm very curious to find out how Microsoft will take that opportunity to build LinkedIn into an even bigger platform. Uh, but this is one of the biggest moves that we've seen in years. For me, this summer was about driverless vehicles. It was uh, amazing how many updates we've seen in the last few weeks. Uh, one that I really liked was the one from Ford, where the CEO really said, okay, our deadline is 2021. And by 2021, we want to make cars that don't have steering wheels, don't have gas pedals, don't have brake pedals and we're gonna make sure that it's absolutely safe. So that's five years from now. Volvo is doing the same thing. Uh, they announced 2020. And in fact, there are about 17 or 18 other car brands that during this summer announced that they're working on driverless cars. And their deadline is almost like four to five to six years from now. So this is happening faster than we all thought, which is really cool. Um, but in the last two weeks, we got more updates on the driverless pro car program of Uber. And what we've seen is that in Pittsburgh, where they have their research lab, they're gonna start this month, actually today, um, with picking up customers, real life customers, with their driverless cars. So they have 100 Volvos, driverless Volvos in Pittsburgh. Um, today, those Volvos still have engineers on board to make sure that everything happens in a, in a good fashion. Uh, but the idea is to start using these driverless cars as soon as possible. So I think if we look at this evolution, five years ago, we all thought it was science fiction. Today, we have the first real life cases and probably five years from now, we will have fleets of driverless vehicles driving around in our cities and, and on our highways. Without any doubt, the hype of the summer was of course, of course, Pokemon Go. And we were traveling in Seattle when we suddenly saw this huge amount of people standing there in front of a food truck. And I was thinking, hey, this must be really good food. So I checked it out. And that's when I discovered that the whole hype of Pokemon was, uh, was happening because all those people were standing there to get their Pokemon stuff. And uh, when we looked into the details then, it was amazing to see how hundreds of millions of people around the world were playing Pokemon. And even when we were hiking in the mountains, people were chasing Pokemons there. Uh, you didn't get proper service anymore in restaurants because the waiters were catching Pokemon. So it was really amazing how the entire world played this game during summer. Um, the value, the market cap of Nintendo went up with 7.5 billion because of this game. And now you see that the hype's a little bit over, you see that the stats and the usage is going down again. But, you know, I think that this is really a game changer um, because this is a new type of gaming when you go on the street. Uh, I've heard rumors that there's about to uh, be released a new Harry Potter game in the same fashion. So I think this is the beginning of augmented reality. But to be honest, if we think that Pokemon is now augmented reality, we haven't seen anything yet. Before summer, we went to Meta and we looked at their new device that they launched a few months ago. And that is something else. You know, this is, these guys are dreaming about a world without screens. That is their ambition, to remove all screens from the world. So if you go shopping and you want to buy a pair of gloves that you actually look at your hand and you see the gloves around your hand, so you can imagine what it's really going to be like. That's going to be the next phase, but I'm pretty sure that Pokemon Go is just a game changer in the usage of augmented reality and in the way that we're going to play games in the future. So some people love it, some people hate it, but it's really interesting to see how this is changing interfaces and how customers will start using augmented reality interfaces and how fast it can go overnight. We can see an adoption of something new like that. So this week was uh, for me the week of Elon Musk. Uh, I hope you guys saw his keynote presentation about 
with the plans of SpaceX to colonize Mars. Um, some of you will probably know this that uh, Peter Hinton and me, we, we often take groups to Silicon Valley and to the west coast of the US and we had a few times the pleasure of visiting SpaceX already a few years ago and we were amazed with their vision that they said that they would colonize Mars. Well, if, if at that point they would have told us that today they would make this plan so concrete, I don't know if we would have believed it. Um, because the ambition of colonizing Mars is so big, but then if you see the keynote that uh, Elon Musk delivered today, it's like, wow. Uh, it's so concrete. They know exactly when to start. They know exactly how to do it. They have the plans of those rocket ships to ship in the beginning 100 people at a time to Mars, but in the future it's going to be like 200 or 250 people. Uh, the plan to make it an, a backup planet is what they call it. They said, you know, we're going to fuck up this planet so we need a backup planet as soon as possible and that will be Mars and then you see that they're actually doing it and it will take 40 to 100 years to make it a self-sustaining planet but that is the ambition that the humankind becomes a multi-planetary species and that we're gonna live on two planets so what they told us at SpaceX is that their ambition is to get as soon as possible 1 million people on Mars to create that second planet and that backup planet but again, if you see the plans, if you see the spaceships, if you see the theory behind it, it's amazing. And that, that, and those things will happen in the next decade. So I cannot tell you how excited I am about this and how much I love companies that have such an ambition. And at the same time, they create the not just the story, but also the milestones to make it happen. So that was huge news this week. A few days ago, Mark Zuckerberg presented his VR platform that they are launching uh, pretty soon at Facebook and they're putting it open for developers. Uh, so this is taking off uh, extremely fast now. And it's fun to see because uh, previously we saw VR as uh, you know a tool that we could pretend that we were on a roller coaster or when we are on a roller coaster that we have some new special effects or that we watch a movie in VR, you know, just watching stuff. Now what they presented is really impressive. It is a new sort of a social network where VR actually is created to place people first and where you can do stuff together. So imagine that I put my VR glasses on and someone else does that as well. Well, together we can be in the same room with our avatars. We can talk to each other. We can play games with each other. We can visit places. Uh, I can take you on my trip to some place where I have a, a 360 video of. So we can actually bring our friends into our lives and enjoy that together. Just imagine what this could do to, uh, you know, just socializing with each other, but also meetings, you know, this, this could have a big impact on doing business trips and, uh, or not doing business trips or how you experience games and, and, and playing together. You know, when I travel a lot, I'm in Barcelona right now and my kids are in Belgium. Uh, with, if we all had VR, when we used the new interface that Mark Zuckerberg presented, we could play a game um, and, and, and do anything together and, and actually be together, which is extremely fun. So VR is going to the next level and I'm really curious to see what all the developers will do with this. This is a big move. It's Wednesday and uh, we all woke up with a new president in the United States. Uh, besides the results, this is also uh, an end of an era. It is the end of believing in traditional market research where you ask people what they believe in and what they like because we found out thanks to the results and the polls and if you compare them that people don't actually say what they think. So this is really a turning point and it means that we have to work with behavioral data and work like companies like Netflix that measure what people actually do and based on that they make decisions. So I think this is a tipping point for everyone who's related in market research and using market research to make predictions about the market that it's not what people say what you should look into when people talk about big data but it's actually what people do and behavioral data that will learn a lot more and will allow you to make the correct predictions. Big news, um, Hyperloop, you know, the system, the transportation system that Elon Musk invented and he gave the plans away for free and hoping that someone would build it. It looks like the most science fiction transportation system ever. Well, it's coming to life and in 2017 and 18, they're going to build one that will transport people from Dubai to Abu Dhabi in about 12 minutes time, which is amazing. 